Hello, dear friends. We'd like to read the scriptures to you. We got some good news. It's in the Bible, the Word of God. We read these lovely words. This is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptation that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. And why is that so good? The Bible says, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. There is none righteous, no, not one. And so that took me in. I was lost and guilty before a holy and a righteous God. And I understood my need one day. I came into the gospel hall and I heard the words of life, the way of salvation. It was through a person, not a religion, not my good works or my baptism, not even my prayers. It was through the work of the cross. The Lord Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And no man cometh unto the Father but by me. I heard them words, Jesus loves me. This I know, for the Bible tells me so. I knew that as a little child, but I didn't take it in. I thought I could establish my own righteousness on something that I could do until God in his mercy brought me to repentance. He humbled me, but it was all of his grace. He had something better for me, an abundant life, eternal life. The gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. And there was a happy day in my life, January the 16th, 1983. And the scriptures tell us, for when we were yet without strength, in due time Christ died for the ungodly. I was so thankful for that work of the cross. I was in tears, tears of joy that God would save a sinner like me. He would give his own son for God so loved the world, that's you, and that's me, that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. I'm glad that he suffered once for sins, the just, for me, the unjust, to bring me to God. And he loves you, dear friend. We're not boasting of ourselves. Our boast is in the one that died for sinners and was buried and rose again and he's coming again and that's why the bible says you have to be prepared prepared to meet thy god god is holy and one sin will keep us out of heaven dear friend he that believeth on the son hath everlasting life you have everlasting life i have everlasting life i don't deserve it i don't deserve to be in heaven but there's one that took the guilty sinner's place and died in his room instead. For man, O oh miracle of grace, for man, the Savior bled. Have you ever appreciated what Jesus did on the cross for you, dear friend? Can you say, Jesus loves me? This I know, for the Bible tells me so. Have you trusted Jesus in his saving power? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb, the blood of Jesus Christ, God's Son, cleanses us from all sin. Every sin can be forgiven in your life by trusting the work of the cross. The nail-pierced hands, do they mean anything to you today? They mean everything to the believer. We're appreciative that there would one come into this world, not for any sin of his own. He was sinless. He was spotless, holy and harmless the Lamb of God that taketh away the sin of the world. Have you trusted him? Behold, now is the accepted time. Now is the day of salvation. He says, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Surely there must be someone here who's going through some burdens and trials and heartaches in life because of sin, because of circumstances, but God has allowed that in your life to draw you to him, dear friend. He's not willing that any should perish, 
but that all should come to repentance. There was many that came to the Lord Jesus. And they said, good master, what must I do to inherit eternal life? And he said, you know the commandments. And one man says, I've done all these from my youth up. What am I lacking? Go sell all that you have and give to the poor. And take up your cross and follow me. But the man went away sorrowful. Maybe there's something in your life that you're hiding, that you're wanting more than God's salvation. What shall it profit a man if he gains the whole world but loses his own soul? We tell you, dear friend, there's nothing like God's salvation. And it's in a person, nothing that you can do. It's in the work of the cross. And that's why we preach Christ and him crucified. There's no other way, dear friend. Your religion can't do it. Your works, your tears. It's through the Lord Jesus Christ. And he loves you, make no mistake about it. Do you love him? Have you thought about that? Lord Jesus, I love thee. I know thou art mine, my rock and my fortress, my surety divine, my gracious redeemer. My song shall be now, tis thou who art worthy. Lord Jesus, tis thou. And there's a verse that I heard many, many times. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. What do you believe about the Lord Jesus Christ, dear friend? I believe when he was on that cross that he was suffering there for my sin. I trusted him, and I'm so thankful I did. It was all God's grace. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. And so, dear friend, can you humble yourself today, that pride and that self, thinking that you're going to be in heaven by something that you did? You can't escape the way of the cross, dear friend. God has highly exalted him and given him a name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow things in heaven, things on earth, and things under the earth, that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Why don't you thank the Lord Jesus, even right now, for what he's done on the cross for your sin, dear friend, and escape this year wages of sin, and trust the Savior who loves you and gave himself for you. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and you've got God's authority. You have eternal life.